Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome to Christ Center House of God. We're going to have our Saturday meeting in Jesus' name. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Hallelujah. We give Him praise. We give Him glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Ibra candala tasha de televese, rabo bobo kushala cantiera basate. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Cantara da casote mantaya. Rebo shala cantara basate. Y pere de beche televo kusoto.
There is the name of Jesus. Good evening and welcome, welcome everybody to Christ Centered International House of God. We bless the Lord for today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank the Lord for today and for what he has already done. Thanking that we can give him our worship. And we come with nothing but just to worship only because His Spirit is helping us. Without the Spirit of God to help us, we can do nothing. We are weak. We are helpless. We can do nothing. That Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that Spirit that moved upon this earth to make this earth, without that Spirit, we can do nothing. In no strength of ours, we are sinful men who make mistakes over and over. But we thank God that once we come to Him, His word declare that He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Today we worship Him because of who He is. Yes. Not because of who we are. Yes. Because of who he is, we give him glory. Yes. Because of who he is, we give him praise. Yes. Because of who he is, we lift our hands and say, Lord, we worship you. Because of who you are. Because of who you are. Thank you for always forgiving us. Thank you for forgiving us when we make the mistake. That you don't leave us in our situation. But you lift us up. Today I want to encourage someone. If you're feeling down. Know that you serve the great I am. Who lifts you up. When you're not feeling okay. We cannot do anything in our strength. Only in the strength of the Lord. Because moment by moment, second by second, we make mistakes. We do things out of the will of God. But we thank God that he said the righteous will fall seven times. But he asked us to get up. He said to get up. Because we have no strength in our own only the strength of the Lord. Pray the most Begin to pray right now. Begin to intercede right now for your loved ones. Because we are in the time of suddenly. God is gonna do sudden move, sudden changes, sudden deliverance, sudden healing in the name of Jesus. Your name is holy. Bless his holy name. Once, right now I would like to call on um, Nikki to come and bless the offering, our minister Nikki. But before that, I would like to greet each and every one in the mighty name of Jesus. I'd like to extend greetings to our pastor, Pastor Stephen. Greetings to Minister Samuel, as he's here with us, Minister Nikki, Minister, uh, Pastor Evan Morgan, Minister Trisha, and all God's beautiful children. We're sending greetings 
to um, Joel Giuliani Jr. Greetings to your yes, family. Hallelujah. Greetings and love. Amen. And the Lord is with you. Amen. And if he be for you, nothing can be against you. Amen. So we praise Hallelujah. the Lord and we Jesus. lift him high in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Receive Amen. greetings, our um, internet audience, in the mighty name of Jesus, my mother-in-law and all who is watching all of God's beautiful children Hallelujah. receive greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Minister Nikki, could you please come and bless this week offering in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, everyone, in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to thank the Lord for today's offering and what he has provided and that we can give back to him in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight. We yes. thank you for tonight's service, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for Pastor Stephen and Vanessa, Father. We thank you for Christ-centered house of God, and we thank you, Lord, for today's offering oh god we thank you father that lord we can give back to you oh lord as what you have given us father but we thank you oh god that we can never give you out father so we pray father in the name of jesus that you will bless today's offering and use it for your glory and for the furtherance of your ministry in the mighty name of jesus father we thank you lord once again for tonight and we thank you for tonight's service in the mighty name of Jesus and for all that you're going to do in the mighty name of Jesus father we pray also that you will multiply tonight's offering father bless those who has given bless those who did not have to give tonight in the name of Jesus father bless your people oh God and we thank you for the word that will come soon Lord and we'll touch your people tonight in the mighty name of Jesus father we place everything into your hands hands and we give you thanks in Jesus mighty name amen 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 praise the Lord praise the Lord thank you so much minister Nikki we're getting prepared now for the word from our pastor a now word that the Lord has placed in his heart to lift up to build us up because the, we are living in a time when there's mighty, mighty battles raging. Yes. But we have nothing to fear because Jesus said to us to be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. So no matter what is going on, we still have a hope. We have Christ in us, the hope of glory. So as our pastor come with the word, it will be a word to strengthen us, Amen. to fill us with might, yes, to Lord. fill us with the fear of the Lord, Hallelujah. and to give us the wisdom of the Lord, not earthly wisdom, yes. but godly wisdom. Hallelujah. And as we receive the word from our pastor, please help me to welcome him for what God has placed on his heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessings to each and every one once more. And once again, I'd like to also send greetings to my two sisters who are watching from Georgia. Greetings to my sister Cheryl and Shelly. God bless you and your family. And we um, cannot wait to see what the Lord has in store for us this evening. God bless you all. Welcome and greetings, Sister Mary. And she's also here with us. Greetings, everyone, in the mighty name of Jesus. Pastor Stephen. Please come and take it away in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray to break every yoke, remove every burden, and we pray in the name of Jesus to bring restoration and healing in Jesus' name. Whoever needs it tonight, Lord, yes, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray to bring revelation and insight yes. like never before in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to pray again very soon, but I welcome you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Praise God. We're going to have an awesome time today in Jesus' name. And uh, praise the Lord. If you have your Bible, please open it up at Gospel of John 12, 24. Gospel of John 12, 24. Praise God. The Bible says here to us, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abided alone. But if it die, it bring forth much fruit. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray once again in Jesus' name. 
Lord, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you, Lord, for your holy word. In the name of Jesus, that you sent from above into our life. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask you right now to illuminate the word of God. Reveal to us, O Lord, in Jesus' name, with your great light and revelation, O Lord, Christ to us, the hope of glory, in Jesus' name. And we pray that by the, through this word, O Lord, bring healing. Yes. Through this word, O Lord, Hallelujah. touch someone's life, O Lord, Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Lord, through this word, we pray to break every yoke yes. and remove every burden in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. By your mercy and your grace in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So again, welcome in Jesus' name. Tonight we have our English meeting, which we talked about that Saturday is English. Monday is going to be Hungarian. Tuesday is Hungarian English. Praise God. Pray for us that we're able to do this uh, throughout the week. And we thank you so much for those who, uh, who, who want to give. Some uh, people send me a request that they want to give, but they don't know how. So the reason that I put up on Facebook for you, the way you can give uh, by email money transfer right now, it's at reverend.myname and then at gmail.com. It's, it's put up right there so you can see it. So for all those who write to me how you can uh, give, it's right there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now we read Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 24. One of the most amazing and interesting uh, scriptures where Jesus was asked a question. Actually, there some, some Greek people came to visit him and they said, we want to see Jesus. But then... Jesus answered with this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bring forth much fruit. It's very interesting answer when some people are looking for you and they say, we want to see Jesus. So disciples come to Jesus, they say, there's some Greek here, they want to see you. And Jesus says, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bring forth much fruit. Praise God. What, a, what an amazing and interesting way to answer to the disciples when somebody looking for you. Now, you're going to understand the mystery at the end, of course. And throughout the message, I believe God going to give you revelation uh, upon revelation. Now, the title of this message, it's called The Mystery of the Seed. The Mystery of the seed praise God there are more than 250 verses Bible verses that deals with and speak directly about seeds so you can see that in the Bible the seed is very important God is saying something about seeds there are actually seeds the Bible talks about there are grass seeds there are fruit seeds there are seed of a man there is a seed of a woman, there is a seed of a children, seed of the word of God, the seed of our words, the seed of the body of Christ, the seed of the church, and the seed of our physical body. Praise God. You can see like 10 different ways how the Bible talks about seed. Symbolically, figuratively, metaphorically, the Bible talks about seeds and uses seeds in many different ways and shape or form. Praise God. But we're going to talk about and going to deal with something very profound and interesting. Amen? Amen. Seed, first of all, we, understand, we, have, we have to understand in the physical what seed is before we understand in the spiritual ways and what God is saying. Praise God. Seed is a self-contained unit designed for the reproduction of a species that has a a spiritual as well as physical meaning oh praise God so you can see that it is seed is something that has encoded in the DNA of the seed a reproduction of that same type of tree or fruit or whatever it is it is for reproduction praise God and it has physical meaning and spiritual meaning oh praise God 
A seed contains specific qualities that enables it to work or even after extended times outside of the normal environment that they like to grow in. Seed is unique. Oh, hallelujah. Word that can either be taken as a single unit or as a plural word, meaning multiple instances of the same reproductive unit. Praise God. The first mention of seed in the Bible, remember, first mention is very important in the scriptures. First mention of seed in the Bible is within the context of the first chapter of Genesis, actually. When God creates the world that we all live in. Praise God. Genesis 1.11. Oh, hallelujah. I hope I'm not going too fast and you're able to catch up with us. Praise God. The Bible says in Genesis 1.11, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit of this kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Oh, praise God. So God says what? Let the earth bring forth grass yielding seed. Hallelujah. And the Bible says here that the fruit tree yielding fruit of this kind, whose seed is in itself. Oh, praise God. Whatever God created, he encoded in that seed the purpose what it was created for are you catching this Amen. there is a dna encoded there is a program that is encoded in that seed of what is supposed to accomplish that seed when that seed is placed in an environment that it was designed then that seed began to germinate and that seed began to grow praise god now watch this this dramatic Confirmation that, that if a seed sown, it will do something when it lands in the right kinds of soil. Praise God. Hallelujah. They are talking about the mystery of the seed. Hallelujah. Praise God. I pray in the name of Jesus that God give you ears to hear, eyes to see in Jesus' name. Amen. Watch this. It has to have the right kind of soil. The hmm. right kind of soil. Seed. As the word of God needs the right kind of soil. You as a seed needs the right kind of soil. Praise God. I'm going to talk about different ways the seed for you today. Amen. Amen. Now, each beginning is the end of a waiting. Each beginning is the end of a waiting. Praise God. We are each given exactly one chance to be. Oh, praise God. Each of us is both impossible and inevitable. Every tree was first a seed that waited. Are you listening? Every seed that, every, every tree was first a seed that waited. The Bible also talked to us symbolically about that we are also a tree. But we're gonna go from the level of that we are a seed first. And we're gonna talk about the word of God as a seed. And at last, we're going to talk about Jesus Christ as a seed. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. A seed knows how to wait. A seed knows how to wait. Most seeds wait for at least a year before starting to grow in the natural. A cherry seed can wait for a hundred years with no problem. Praise God. What exactly each seed is waiting for is known only to that seed. Praise God. Some unique trigger combination of temperature, moisture, light, and many other things are required. See, for a seed to germinate, it has to have the right conditions. Amen? Mm -hmm. Seeds remain dormant or inactive mm -hmm. until conditions are right for germination. All seeds need what? Water, oxygen, proper temperature in order to germinate. This, the, then the seed coat is a hard shell for the seed that protects the inside of it. That then the seed coat breaks open and a root or a radical emerges first, followed by the shoot that contains the leaves and the stem. Praise God. And you know, many times as you walk, even in the field or in the park, right? You probably don't look down where just beneath your single footprint 
if you believe it or not, seeds, probably hundreds of seeds, each one alive and waiting. They hope against hope for an opportunity that will prob probably never come. More than half of these seeds will die before they feel the trigger that they are waiting for. And during awful years, every single of them will die. Praise God. Now what does this mean to us? In the natural, you see that how thousands and millions of seeds are falling. And under our feet, there are hundreds, hundreds of seeds. There are seeds that there are so tiny, you can't even see it with the naked eye. Praise God. There are so many seeds and types of seeds. But many of them die without ever getting the right conditions. This is the same with many people today. This is the same with many people that God planted in this world. But they never had the right condition of hearing the gospel, hearing the light, hearing the water of the word of God placed upon their life. And they never journeyed in their heart and they never get to know God. Yes, I'm, my God. I'm, I'm bringing the gospel to this. Praise God. I'm bringing the gospel of God to this. Now, the right, what is the right condition for a seed to germinate? Now, let us understand what are the right conditions are. Number one, seeds must be planted into the right soil. Hmm. Seeds, number one, must be planted into the right soil. If you don't get the right soy for the right seed, that seed will die. That seed will not. And what does this mean? Every person in this world that born into this world and God the Father planted them in this world, they need to be in the right religion. They, they need to be in the right church. Oh, praise God. They have to be in the right soil in order to germinate. Look at what 1 Corinthians 3, 6 says. Oh, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Praise God. You see how Paul the Apostle is preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ. You see here that he is the one with the apostolic ministry that he planted certain individuals and God gave him that amazing uh, work to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And he said, I have planted some seeds in the field. I have planted people in the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is only soil in this world that work for anybody. Praise God. So the first thing the seed needs to be planted into the right soil. Hallelujah. And God will use different of us, praise God, different individuals for planting, for watering, and then God is the one who gives the increase. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Hosea 10, 12. In Hosea 10, 12. The Bible says. Sow to yourself in righteousness. Amen. Reap in mercy. Hallelujah. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Amen. Oh, praise God. Now in Hosea, we see here an amazing word. That says, sow yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it's time to seek the Lord. Now look at this in the NLT. Are you ready? I said, plant the good seeds of righteousness, and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts, for now is the time to seek the Lord. That he may come and shower righteousness upon you. Amen. So praise God. When we talk about us as a seed planted by God the Father in this world. And the soil as the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. God will send his servants Hallelujah. to plant us into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. By preaching the light and the water. Praise God to us. Light as Jesus. Light of the kingdom of God. And the word of God by water. Praise God. And when they, and when they began to preach, the hard shell of the heart will break up. Only the gospel, only the water of the word of God is able to break up that hard shell in our hearts. Praise God. So that we begin to see and understand and set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 
1 Peter 1.23 says this to us. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which live and abide forever. The word of God is also like a seed planted in the field of our hearts. Oh, praise God. So I'm going to go from different perspectives and different ways. As the word of God is a seed planted into the ground of our hearts. And it began to grow. Why? There's water. Oh, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you some amazing things. Because we're talking about right now the right conditions for that seed to germinate. The right conditions. Amen. When you are planted, many times you will experience darkness. Oh, praise God. Because see, when you plant a seed in the physical, where does, where does it go in the field? It goes into a dark place. So, the reason we're going through dark times, okay? Because God, when He starts to do something great, when He starts to create, when He began, He begins in darkness. Hallelujah. Yes. That might surprise many of you today. Praise <laughs> God. Because you thought that, oh... God starts in the light. He's light. Yes. Let's see what the Bible says. Genesis 1, 5 says this. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. What was the first thing? The morning or the evening? No, it was the evening was the first. Yes. Whenever God starts something the first day, evening, night, darkness was first. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, oh, so I'm telling you something Jesus. as an encouragement yes. Yes. for many of you. Yes. If you are going through any dark times, if you are going through anything that is dark, yes. that doesn't look good, yes. something that happened to you that it wasn't supposed to, darkness, yes. and, and you don't see out, hmm. God is preparing you for something greater. Yes. God is preparing you for something hmm. bigger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is about to bless you in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Whenever darkness is around you, get ready. Yes. God is yes. starting. Hallelujah. God always starts in the darkness. Yes. Yeah. Evening was the first before the light of the morning appeared. Hallelujah. Amen. All praise God. In Matthew 4, 16, the Bible says, The people which sat in darkness saw the great light. And to oh. them which sat in the region and shadow of that light is sprung up. Oh, praise God. What does this mean in the light of what we are talking about? That if we are a seed mm. and we are planted by the Father into this world, mm. we are in darkness. Mm. And we remain a seed that if we live through life mm. without receiving the nourishment from the water, without the light that comes from the sun, then we remain in that field and we remain in that earth mm. and we never germinate and we never able to shoot our stems out towards the light. Praise oh God. God. <laughs> but when, when we are planted into the right condition, when we are planted into the right church, yes. when we are planted into the kingdom of God, Hallelujah. then the water, the moisture of that water, yes. Begin to break open our shell. Yes. And watch yes. this. No matter which way you put the seed into the ground. Did you know that it will always grow towards the light? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will never grow down or right side or, or, or left. It will always grow towards the praise light. Praise the Lord. This is how God designed it. My God. Oh, praise the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. So we who sat in darkness... When Jesus came through his light, we began to see his light and we began to grow in Jesus' mighty name Hallelujah. towards the light that he shows us. Amen. Oh, praise God. Now, the other thing you need, of course, rain for a seed to germinate. You need rain in the natural, right? Rain is the symbol of the Holy Spirit, actually. In Joel 2.23, the Bible says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for He has given you the former rain faithfully, and He will cause the rain to come down for you. Mm. Oh, praise God. The former rain 
and the latter rain in the first month. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. As was in the Old Testament, God poured out His Spirit upon certain people. Praise God. Joel 2 has been fulfilled in Acts 2 when Peter stands out that this Hallelujah. is by Joel. Hallelujah. This is the fulfillment of Joel yes. that I will pour up my spirit yes. upon all flesh Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joel 2.28 says this, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour up my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now what does the rain bring? Water. Yes. Water is the symbol of the word of God in Ephesians 5.26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. It's also according to John 4.10 is the symbol of new life. Hallelujah. Oh praise God. Praise by the rain the water comes and the water gives us new life. Which is the word of God which we might born again. Thank you, Jesus. Now seed to germinate you need sun. You need sunlight. You need the sun to shine on that seed. So that he is able to shoot forth towards the light. Sun. Sun. S-U-N. Praise God is a symbol of Jesus and the symbol of the gospel. Did you know that? Psalm 84, 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. S-U-N and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be withhold from those who walk uprightly. Malachi 4.2 says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness, S-U-N, Righteousness. Did Hallelujah. you hear what I'm saying? S the Bible says not S-O-N. It says S-U-N of Righteousness. Mm -hmm. Arise with healing in His wings. Mm -hmm. And you shall go forth and grow up as cause of the stall. Thank Matthew you, 17 to, records to us that when Jesus bring up his three disciples, praise God, and he was transfigured before them, and mm -hmm. his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. In John 8, 12, the Bible says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness, Thank but shall have the light of life. Amen. So Jesus yeah. says, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That when you are a seed in the darkness, in the field, praise the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the sun began to shine upon you. Hallelujah. And you who were in darkness will come out from that earth and you begin to see the light. In Jesus' name. In Gospel of John 9, 5. The Bible says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now what does that mean? I have to tell you this. The Bible says, Jesus says, as long as I'm in the world. Which means there is going to be the time when he leaves earth. Oh, Matthew 5.14 kicks in. Yes. And what is Matthew 5.14 says? You are the light of the world. Hallelujah. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Yes. Which means that now Jesus is going to use you. Jesus wants to use you as a light. To those who are in darkness. Amen. Those who are still planted but never came up yet. My never Hallelujah. come alive. Hallelujah. God going to use you as a light also in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once you begin to grow as a plant. You need stability. And to root yourself more in the soil. Yes. In order for you to last. Hallelujah. Listen carefully what I'm saying. My God. May God give you heart to understand. May God give you ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you right now. In order for any tree that is planted by the Father. Any tree that you plant even in the natural. Mm. In order for that tree to last. Mm. You need wind. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need wind. See, the process of germination is wonderful. It is a miracle. Praise God. The water touches the seed. The water shall broke up and new life begin to emerge. Hallelujah. But then, but then everything stops. Mm. My God. But then what's happening? Now it's, it's, it's the tree's response, that, that tree's responsibility to be able to grow its roots. Why? Because the roots has to grow down deep into the soil 
so that to continue to able to grow, to be able to find water in the soil. Oh, hallelujah. So God created the wind for that purpose. Yes. Because when a tree began to grow, see, watch, let me tell you something. If you begin to grow a tree and you build around the tree a shed and cover it up so that no wind can touch it, that tree will live temporarily, but then it will die. Because the wind, when it touches the tree, it helps the tree. It, 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 it's a built-in uh, uh, mechanism in the tree. It's like a defensive mechanism that God created in the DNA of the tree. That when the wind hits it, it begins to grow its roots more down into the soil to be able to hold on. Oh, God. God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. So the wind, praise God, is God created it in the natural to have the trees to grow higher and higher and to be able to stand strong. For hundreds of years. Oh my God. Oh, my like a Wind. Wind. The symbol of the Holy Spirit. Acts to the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came down as a mighty rushing wind and filled the house. Oh, praise God. So God gives us Holy Spirit as we come into the kingdom. And when the wind began to blow you, you began to grow your roots down more into Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. More into Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is the source in Jesus' name. Now, the wind is also the symbol of wars. A symbol of strife and commotion. A symbol of problems and issues. So sometimes God will allow you to go through situations. God will allow you to go through some defeats. God will allow you to go through some things so that your roots will grow down more into Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God will allow you to go, go through some winds so that you can be stronger in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anything that the Lord allow you to go through, He allowed it because He knows you can go through it. Hallelujah. The right conditions to germinate in this world, to bear God's fruit. Because God wants you to be from a seed to grow up to a plant, from a plant to a tree, so that you can bear fruit. Hallelujah. To the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says you are in this world, but not of this world. Even though God planted you in this world as a seed, but you are not of it. In John 17, 14 to 17, the Bible says, I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Mm -hmm. Sanctify them by your truth. Hallelujah. Your word is true. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. In 1 John 2, 8 to 11, mm -hmm. says this. Again, a new commandment I write to you. Which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says he's in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. Yes. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because he, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Praise the Lord. These are people who are still in the earth. These are people whose heart shell has not broken up yet. Because the light and the moisture of the water of the word of God has not touched their heart yet. My God. Even though some of them maybe call themselves Christian. Maybe because they say, I believe and I love God. They say it with their mouth, but their actions say something else. My God. Their words and actions say something else. Praise God. They are still in darkness. Yes. They still haven't seen the light yet. Because once you meet with Jesus, 
you'll never be the same. Yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't tell me that if you meet with Jesus but you still hate your brother, you met with him. Mm. It's impossible. It is like someone walk to you and tell you, you know, just now an 18 wheeler tractor trailer hit me. And you would say, my brother, you should check out some doctors, some mental doctors, because something is wrong with you. If you meet with a truck, you would not stand in here to talk to me now. Because when you meet with a truck or trailer, you don't survive. You'll be in pieces. It is the same thing when somebody tells you that I am a Christian and saying I'm a believer. Then I should see a great change in you. Amen. I should, I should really see that you are completely different. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we can see here an amazing symbolism too. Again, the word of God is like water. The sunlight that comes is like Jesus revealed to us in the darkness. Yes. The soil is this world. Hallelujah. The soil can be also your heart where the word of God is a seed. Praise God. But the field where the seed is sown can be also your mind. Mm -hmm. Pay attention now. The seed that can be seen can be the word of God or the seed of the enemy. My God. Both can grow. Now listen carefully. Your mind, your heart, praise God, which is your spirit man. And it contains your soul, which is your mind with an emotion. So the field can be your mind. When now, if you allow, the enemy can sow his seed. Mm. We see in the parable, I'm going I'm to read about it, about the parable of the sower, praise God, but I'm not going to run uh, uh, towards myself, praise God, and, and hallelujah, praise God. So we see that how our mind can be the field, and the word of God is a seed, but also the enemy have a seed. Now pay attention so interestingly, watch this, already in God's law, in the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, it was prohibited to sow two kinds of seed on the same field. Are you listening? In Leviticus 19, 19, the Bible says, You shall keep my statues, thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. And watch this, what he says. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Oh my God. God already tell them, neither shall the garment mingled with linen and woolen come upon thee. Praise God. In Deuteronomy 22, 9, it says, Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds. Mm -hmm. Why? It was also connected to actual Canaanite worship. It was also connected to idol worship. So watch this, God is already telling the people of Israel, if you have a field, make sure only one kind of seed is allowed in that field. Jesus. Praise God. Why God would tell them this? Because it was showing, showing to us in the future that only the seed of the pure holy word of God Hallelujah. should be Amen. come upon the seed, on, on the soil of our mind and heart. Yes. Because seeds, when they, are, when they are put into the right soil, they can germinate. Yes. And if the evil one sowed, today we're going to pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every seed that the evil one has sowed into your mind and heart, yes. in the name of Jesus. We're going to root it out today. Hallelujah. We're going to remove some stones. Hallelujah. And we're going to remove in the name of Jesus everything that tried to choke even yes. the word of God. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Jesus shows in the parable of the sower that the environment affects the seed's growth. Yes. Oh, praise God. When we make the proper application, people are the ground, and our environment and what we do after receiving the seed, the word of truth, containing the doctrines, is what affects his growth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this analogy, growth represents sanctification, which is the formation of God's image in us by living His way of life empowered by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Are you catching this? What we do with the seed 
is working out our salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Praise God. It is the equivalent of rain, sunshine, weeding, fertilizing, so that the potential for fruit is the greatest. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. So God will allow certain things to happen to you. Why? Because He's weeding out. God is fertilizing so that your fruitfulness can be better. Amen. Hallelujah. We see this in the natural too. In, 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 in order to be able to, the, the vineyard to be better, they cut off certain things from the, from the stem. They cut off certain things, leaves and stuff that maybe got sick so that it can germinate better. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. That it can grow better and, and fruit to be fruitful better. Now, sanctification is worked out through application by living the doctrines and the truths of God. So sanctification works like this. When you're listening to even this teaching, you're making notes and you begin to apply the truths that you hear. Application of the truth is the work of sanctification in your life. Hallelujah. But there is an enemy of sanctification. Are you listening? There is an enemy of sanctification. Two things. Dilution and pollution. My God. My God. Dilution is the most dangerous one. But pollution is also dangerous. A seed can be polluted. Okay? When a seed is polluted, okay, it will bring forth a mixture. My God. Okay? Mixture churches. Mix because there are mixture of uh, Christians. Different, different pollution comes upon them, okay? And then, it can be also diluted. When it, the seed is diluted, okay? Or sanctification is diluted in a, in a person's life. The problem comes again. Praise God. In John 12, 20 to 28 now, let's read that story again. Where we started with. Are you enjoying this teaching? John 12 says this. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. Watch this. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Remember who is coming? The Greeks. The Gentiles. Remember Jesus is only called to his own. To the Jews. Watch this. Oh, praise God. Watch this. Philip come and tell Andrew. And again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come. That the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. It abideth alone. But if it die, it bring forth much fruit. The heart of the message. The meat is coming now. The disciples come to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Andrew and Philip saying, Jesus, there are some people looking for you. The Greeks. Probably they thinking it would be a good ministry opportunity. There's some kind of opportunity here and they tell Jesus. And then Jesus answered, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Very, very, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abide alone. But if it die, it bring forth much fruit. Why would Jesus answer like this? Because Jesus said it like this. They came to see me. But as long as I'm alive, as long as I'm just one seed, they're not able to see the fullness of the glory of God. Because the time is come when the Son of Man shall be glorified. Praise God. We'll be crucified on a rural cross. And then planted. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. And he's going to be buried. Hallelujah. Planted. Oh, paramashika satan. And when the corn of feet falls to the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it brings for much food. So when Jesus said, when I'm going to die and resurrect, praise God. Hmm. When I die and resurrect, then the seed we begin to grow up. We begin to come out as a tree. Begin to bear fruit. And now, praise God, the glory of God. 
Christ-like people. Hmm. They began to come into this world. And then now they're going to see. Now they're able to meet with the Greeks. Now the world can receive the fullness. Praise God. Jesus was saying that I as a seed must be planted. Hmm. Must die on the cross. Yes. The shell has to be broken. Yes. And has to be buried hmm. in the tomb. Praise God. That at the right time of the three days. Will come out in Jesus' name, resurrected from the dead. Yes. Come to the light. Yes. And whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. And now, God is the one, Jesus is the one. Many as come to him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. In Ecclesiastes 3.11, the Bible says this. This is the mystery. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he had set the world in their heart mm -hmm. so that no man can find out the work that God make from the beginning to the end. When we read this in the King James, it sounds beautiful, sounds nice. Mm -hmm. But when you read this in the NLT, it gives us more revelation. Watch this. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. Yes. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. Yes. Now watch this. Now we get more revelation. Now we see that this has to do with something, this verse, about how eternity is planted into the heart of man. Hmm. Watch this now in the Amplified. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He also planted eternity in men's hearts and minds. A divinely implanted sense of a purpose. Working through the ages. Which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. My God, Yet so that men cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Hmm. What is encoded in us and hidden in us? Hmm. What is that God is, was planning to do? What is that God is revealing through Solomon who wrote Ecclesiastics? Praise God. Watch this now. It is 1 John 5, 11 to 12. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son, Jesus Christ. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. When we accept Jesus eternal life is planted in our hearts hallelujah eternal life planted into your spirit Amen. hallelujah how many of you are excited about it in the name of jesus how many of you have never received jesus christ oh praise that you're gonna pray in the name of jesus and you can receive eternal life from jesus christ today see the bible says that he knew us before the foundation of the world the Bible says in Ephesians 1, 4, Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Yeah. Romans 8, 29, and For whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might, he might be the firstborn among the many, many brethren. As I said it, seeds contain information. Yeah. Seeds encoded with information. Are you following yeah. this? Before the world began, before God created anything, God knew us. Hmm. We were like seeds in the Father. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. And He already encoded into our DNA that one day, hmm. when we are planted into this world, those who hear His voice, praise God, those who will begin to experience His light, and the life-giving water of the Word of God, mm. we begin to journey it. Mm. Our, the hard heart will begin to break up. Oh, Praise God. Hallelujah. And we begin to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Yes, he encoded in us everything already that we need to know. That all, everything that we need to be. Hallelujah. He encoded in yes. us. This is why in life when you go through nothing really can satisfy you yeah. did you ever notice that no matter how you try to satisfy yourself with anything in this world yeah. 
Yes. Nothing can satisfy mm -hmm. just the Word of God. Yes. Just Jesus. Hallelujah. Just Holy Spirit. Yes. Why? Because we are created by God for His purpose. We are seed, praise God, of God. We are the seed of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We as a seed in this world got contaminated. Hmm. See, Adam and Eve, God gave them a chance not to sin, but they sin. And now the seed got contaminated. They as the seed. Now I'm not talking about the seed of the woman. I'm not talking about, uh, praise God, the seed of the woman now. I'm talking about we as a seed right now. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, the seed, well, in the world got contaminated. So God already knew this would happen in the, and uh, would happen, and at the four thousand year of the history of the human race, God sent out the promised Holy Seed by the Holy Spirit. So whoever believe, whoever become one with this seed, Amen. will come alive again and able to germinate and fulfill God's desired purpose. Listen carefully. Because the seed, V as a seed, was planted by the Father into this world, mm -hmm. but got contaminated by sin, watch this, we were never able to germinate in this world. Mm -hmm. We never able to become alive, because a seed comes alive when it breaks. Yes. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. But as long as the seed is closed up, it just lay in the ground, mm -hmm. lifeless. It doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And if it stays lifeless, it will stay in the earth, then it will get, it will die completely. Okay? So, Adam and Eve, as they sinned, they got contaminated. So anybody, everybody also born after them, guess what? They come out as a contaminated seed also. Mm -hmm. Every person who born from Adam and Eve. This is why Jesus said, this is why the, the Bible says that God the Father sent Jesus as a seed mm. by Holy Spirit into the womb of Mary. Yes. Hallelujah. The Holy Seed. Mm. And now then we become one with Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is the Holy Seed. When we become one with Him and we are planted by baptism into death. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we are planted with Jesus Christ together. Hallelujah. Then we resurrect Amen. with Him into a new life. Amen. Are you catching this? In 1 Corinthians 6, 17, the Bible says, But that, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Amen. Ephesians 5, 3 says, For we are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bones. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. So we, as a seed that was planted by the Father, we got contaminated because our forefathers, who was our head, Adam and Eve, fall into sin. Whoever, whoever born after Adam and Eve, they born as a contaminated seed. Mm -hmm. I'm talking symbolically right now. Yes. But mm -hmm. then God the Father sent out His only begotten Son in yeah. a form of a seed, telling us, no problem. All of you guys got contaminated, but I'm sending that holy seed. That when you become one with Him through baptism, and you are planted and buried with Him. Yeah. Praise God. When you are buried by baptism, praise God. Hallelujah. Then you will come out and resurrect together with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you will be one with Him. Amen. And you will be in Christ. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let us stand in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Now if any one of you praise God that your heart and the field of your heart is full of stones or full of things of the world and maybe the seed is get contaminated in your life or maybe as you grow out you became a Christian but now something happened in your life and you, you're not growing anymore but now your life got contaminated and there something wrong with you, praise God, then you're going to pray right in the name of Jesus. And the Lord Jesus will wash you with His blood. And we believe and trust God in Jesus' name 
that He will continue to grow you in Jesus' name. And the field of your heart will be free from all stones, from all things that is causing that seed to be contaminated. And your life to be diluted or polluted in Jesus' name. Now if you are that person, I want you to begin to pray with us in Jesus' name and say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, forgive us, O Lord, for all of our sins. Lord, forgive us that we allowed any pollution or dilution in our life. Father, Father, we ask you in Jesus' yes, name, in Jesus name, wash our field, O oh Lord, wash our field, oh Lord, the field of our hearts, field of our heart. from every stone, from every, stone every, weed, every weed, that try to choke the word of God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we surrender to you, Lord, we surrender and we ask you, Lord, and we ask you, Lord forgive us. Forgive us. And wash us with your blood. Wash wash us with your your blood. blood. And break every yoke from our life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. If you said this prayer, hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue this journey in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And you grow up into a maturity. Where now you're able to bear fruits. Hallelujah. That, that was already on the desktop too. You know, a lot of songs. Praise God. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the praise and we all the glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. So I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. For all those who are watching right now, in Jesus' name. We pray for all those who are in the name of Jesus who needs healing right now. Lord, heal them and touch their life and heart. In Jesus' name. Use them for your glory. And Father, all those who are growing up to maturity, Lord, use them for your glory that they may bear good fruits for you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you. Lift up His countenance and be gracious unto you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Bye everyone. God bless you. Let God keep you.
Jesus. 